Hey everyone, I realize it has been quite some time since I've done really a video of any sort, so I've decided I'm going to show y'all how to make a bucket swamp cooler. And there's tons of plans out there, but some of them don't really detail it all that well, or they don't get they don't get the best selection of parts. So I've done a little bit of digging on my own, and I think I've come up with something that'll work. Um, first up. Got a five gallon bucket. I know it's from Firehouse Subs. They're two dollars. I like eating there. The bucket was there. I needed a bucket. Downside is this air conditioner may end up smelling like pickles, which may or may not be a bad thing because I like pickles. Um, some of the instructions use a coupling glued to the top of the bucket. I'm going to try using a four inch toilet flange. So That'll just yeah, pop on by right there. Uh, got a random stump, a four inch PVC pipe. I'm gonna cut it off about all oh, about that long, maybe three, four inches. Glue that in there, and then four inch elbow. So that'll just that'll sit up there. You can aim it. Got that from Lowe's. Uh, got a Duracool pad. It's like 36 by 36 or something close to that. From Lowe's. Um, dig on Amazon. Got some kind of crazy high output fan. I think this is 240 CFM or 400 CFM. It's a pretty high output fan. Piece of 3 8 ID hose and a 3 8 uh, barb T. Actually, PVC primer and glue. I got a uh, wall adapter, so I can go from 110 to 12 volts, 5, amps, 5 amp output. One thing I did get is it has a bullet or a barrel connector on it, so I can unplug the power supply from the output cord. Pick this up on Amazon, a uh, power plug adapter with a barrel plug. So, if my figuring's right and I've laid everything out correctly, I'll be able to plug this into a wall or into a vehicle power port. And it'll draw, should draw like three and a half amps. And then I got a little, a water pump. Let's see. Yeah, 3.6 watts. So, yeah, I'll be well under three and a half amps or five and a half amps full power. I think three amps. What did that hand say? Yeah, three amps. So I'll draw three and a half amps for this whole setup. Anyway, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna get my whole saw. I'm gonna poke a bunch of holes around the bucket and we'll lay that out. And I'll come back. And I everybody just loves watching people drill holes and fumble around with the drill bits. So, I'm going to skip all that, then I'll come back when i got holes in it, and you can see what I have going on, and we'll start working on putting the pad together, so I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, once I'm done, we'll see how it runs, and in the video description I will have links to everything that I bought, except that random stump of pipe, that came from my dad's house, um, probably any plumber will give you a cut off piece. But anyway, I'll be back in a little bit with a bucket full of holes. Alright, I'm back part way through this hole drilling process. I looked at the hole saws I had laying around and decided I'm going to use a uh, two and a half inch hole saw. And there's my bucket. It is 35 inches in circumference. So, two and a half inch hole saw. I'll leave a one inch gap between holes. That gives me ten holes. So to make it easier on myself, I went ahead and wrapped tape around here, marked all my holes, and uh, we use tape that way if I had to do it over. It's not scribbled all over the bucket. Anyway, drilled some pilot holes. So there's you can see there's ten holes going around there. So I'm gonna take tape off. That way I don't have to pick off little bits of it. Drill the big holes and I'll be back and uh, just so you know. Yeah, 
it definitely smells like pickles. So it could be an interesting air conditioner. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute once I have all of the uh, big holes drilled. Hey everyone, I'm back. So I got ten two and a half inch holes drilled in the bucket. I think that'll be should be enough. If not, it won't be that big of a deal to come back and drill again. Inch hole, inch and a half hole. You're down here, kind of skip, make them look nice. So that's done. Set that aside. What I'm work on next is getting the toilet flange I bought to fit the lid. Um, let me lay the lid up here. I know it's upside down. We go on the. Like I said earlier, I just want to go there-ish. So what I'm going to do is driver, a little dimple right there for my compass to ride in. Let's see. You can see it's rolling or not. It's that four and a half roughly. So I'm going to set my compass up and use the little dimple from casting of my compass and I'm going to mark out in the center for a four and a half inch hole. May or may not cut that tonight. May save it for tomorrow night. May check my grandpa's house if he has a four and a half inch hole saw. But anyway, if not, I'll just use my jigsaw to make something work. But I'm going to lay the lid out get the top flange put together and then we can move on to the fan. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here's where I'm going to stop at for tonight. Got a couple other things to take care of. Uh, got my hole cut. It's got a little bit of an egg shape to it. So, yeah, works out pretty good. Well, I, I'm going to go ahead and just admit it. I unintentionally did this. I bought the toilet ring. I also got the uh, option on the fan to get one of those screens. In fully intending to put the screen on top of the fan, keep trash out. Which that's all fine and well. What I did did not intentionally do, which works out to be quite fantastic, is well, pardon me, hold it with one hand screen pretty much lines up with the holes in the toilet flange so I can reuse those holes put a nut on this side to hold the fan in I don't have to drill but four holes in the lid and then all my drilling will be done as far as mounting the fan and the flange and stuff so what I'm going to do tomorrow get up there what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to figure out a way to stick this on here get that good and lined up yeah. some of that extent so I may end up raiding my bolt hole bolt bins if I have something to stick in here to clamp it down with maybe maybe not uh, maybe just give up and come over here with a wood screw stick a wood screw in it I don't matter how I'm gonna do that but one thing I'm gonna definitely do is go around the edge right here with a little bit of uh, silicone of some sort, just to seal it off, make it stick. Actually, I might check my bolt bin, see what I have that'll pop down in there. Might even have some toilet parts laying around. But anyway, there's the hole in the lid, holes in the bucket, toilet flange is next, and then maybe tomorrow we'll work through more of this pile over here. All right, I'm back again for another night of building. Uh, I know we talked about getting this toilet flange on the bucket lid. Got my hole cut out. What I ended up doing was eyeballing the center of those slots, marked some holes, drilled them. That's one going by. Yeah, about like that. As you can see, they line up close enough. One thing that I did do. I figured out a way to bolt it on there 
of the brand new carriage head bolt and grind two edges off or sand two edges off or use the file. So that drops right in there. Doesn't turn too much. So I'm going to drop a bolt and all these other four holes. And yeah, it's close enough. So we'll, we'll float to it and see. Center lines up well enough. Um, I'm going to take that back off there and we'll coat the inside of this. Get out of there. I'm going to put a bit of silicone right here. Flip that over, bolt it down, get it good and snug, and we'll move on to mounting the fan. So we'll be back in a few minutes. So bolting down the toilet flange didn't go exactly as planned my lid had a little bit of a sag to it and it buckled up so what i'm doing is i have found a random block i had laying around put that on top of there and i found a pretty heavy tool set i sat down there for a clamp so i'll let that dry overnight so what we're going to move on to now is putting the duracool pad in the bucket it's a Piece I bought is 30 by 36. I got it on Amazon. Uh, I've already measured the circumference of my bucket down here at the bottom. The tapers. So I'll measure down here. Uh, I'm going to cut it just a hair shy at 32 and a half. And as far as height, I'm kind of going to eyeball it somewhere around this. So I'm gonna make it 12 and a half tall. That leaves a you know, inch and a half of headroom at the top. Because eventually what we're gonna do is take this hose and make a ring. And that'll sit in up here on top. And then you gotta leave a little more space for the lid to snap on. So I mean, worst case, the, the hose has too much room. Gotta hot glue it to the tub or more silicone. Somehow I'll get creative and stick that on there. But anyway, we're gonna cut wonderful pad 32 and a half by 12 and a half and then I will cut a second one to go in there so we'll end up with one pad around the perimeter another pad inside of that and then right here in the middle we'll put down the pump now I gotta figure out how to stick the pump down the best way because it came in this dinky little bracket so I gotta work that out still May just epoxy it down or uh, hot glue might be the way to go. Definitely not drilling a hole in the bottom of my bucket. I'll figure that out when I get to it. Be back in a minute after I've got this big old pad cut down. Okay, got the first piece of pad cut. Alright, so I end up coming back and cutting another half inch off so it is 32 inches long ish pretty close to that let's get tapers down into the bucket fits up pretty nice to the holes um, if it ends up being a problem so there's only water running through this it ends up being a problem I have, I have enough slack in there that I can put like a dowel or a piece of plastic or something to space that off back of here I might just be spongy enough to do it. Uh, one thing the instructions I was looking at said was to uh, hot glue this gap together. Wasn't sure I needed it first, but I'm going to go back and do that. To, so I'll pull it up some. So measure the bottom. It's 8 inches across. So I will, you know, 8 times pi gives you 25 and an eighth. So the other piece right here, I'm going to cut it 25 and an eighth. Uh, I'm going to show you the way I'm cutting this is I'm gonna come off that end and then I'll take my level and mash it down tight to the floor. Then I got a box cutter I'm just running down the inside of my level. It gives a pretty good cut on it. It's not super amazing or anything but it gets a good clean cut, it takes two passes, works out. So I'll get that one cut, test fit it. And then hot glue both of those together 
And that'll probably be it for the night. That way, hot glue sets up, and then I got a few other things to take care of around the shop. And then we'll move on to the electrical part of it tomorrow night. We'll be back in a few. All right. Next step is I put the tube in the top here. It's gonna get this T put in right there. Just lay that on there. Not far off of how that is. I want the tube to lay kind of more on that back, the outside pad than the inside pad. So I got the inside pad in there. Uh, so I'm gonna roughly eyeball it. I'll cut the tube, get the T on there. And I'll take this excess piece, and that's going to be what runs to the pump in the bottom. Uh, still haven't set the pump up. I'll get the pump in there after I glue the. Uh, more I thought about them, I just hot glue it, see if it'll stick. While well, I got my hot glue gun out, fixing these seams. But you can see this. He's in there pretty well. It. Uh, seems like it, it's going to go together all right. The magic number on this inside pad ended up being 23 inches not 25 there's a little gap here at the top but that ain't gonna hurt anything it just works out that's where i'll put the t and it'll look like it's meant to be there but once the lid on it is on it no one's gonna see it so that'll all be fine and well so we get this tube cut the ring laid out and we'll move on to the next step it's all right so, I've attempted to glue the seams together. That went all right, kind of stuck, kind of didn't, but it's in there. So, what I'm going to do next is hot glue the pump down the bottom. Uh, question putting a foot on the pump, like an aluminum plate or something, to hold it down in there. But I said, nah, I'll just, I'm going to hot glue it, see how that goes, but it doesn't. Then I'll come back and put the aluminum plate in. Uh, did dried overnight. That's what we did here. So that went on there pretty well. I mean, it puckered up in one spot. That's not that bad. What I did notice is the whole space in here is really, really close to how the whole space on my fan works out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill on the inside edge of this hole to fit fit the screws that came with the fan. No, maybe. I'm not sure how long these screws are. They look like they're going to be long enough. If not, I'm going to drive right by Lowe's tomorrow. I'll go get some more. Uh, Look like they're M4. So I'm gonna get a number 10 screw that's about the same size. Stick that in there. Uh, now I did go ahead and cut my PVC pipe. Cut it off at six inches. I gotta clean it up a little bit. It's kind of nasty inside from being stored in outside. That'll I'll glue that down in there. And then I will that's gonna be glued on. The elbow there it's just going to sit on there so if i feel like taking it off or doing something different or trying to put a like a duct to go into a tent something fancy that'll work out uh, did test the fan out the other night it moves a ton of air it's gonna be fantastic on there the next thing i gotta work on okay, is the loop here i'm gonna start right here put a hole I'm going to go every inch around it, put a hole on it, uh, take a lighter or a torch, I'm going to use a uh, end off a wire coat hanger, put holes in it, see how that goes, see how I'll heat that up, stab it in there, just work my way around it, then I'll, this will lay in on top of the, the pad. Also, this little pump that I bought, off Amazon 
seemed like a bargain like eight bucks nine bucks advertised as being a three-eighths of an inch outlet it is eight millimeters so yeah I'm gonna go on it you can see how well that tube fits just not at all so I want to put a uh, improvise slap a hose ring on there and make it stay and I'll be back in a few minutes after I get the holes poked in this uh, hose and get the hose on the pump. I'll get the pump glued in and I'll show you how all that's coming along. Alright, so we're on night four. I know I could probably built this in the afternoon, but if I do half an hour here, hour there, kind of goes together. I have some time to think through things or run the lows if I need to. So, got the holes drilled. This is glued together now. Pipe glue. Got the holes drilled for the motor or the fan. Went ahead and drilled the hole for the power wire. And I got the uh, pumps glued down in there. Just gotta hook that hose up. First thing I'm gonna show you how the holes turned out. Just took a torch and a piece of a coat hanger and torched all these holes in there. There. About 30 seconds, give or take a little. I still have fallen focus. So, you can see there's holes all the way around that tube, so we'll see how that works in a little bit. And so, I gotta hook the hose up. That just lays in like that. Yeah, nothing fancy. They shoot straight down into the mat. Inner mat should absorb some of that. But, yeah, I'll get the tube there hooked up, see how it lands. Might have to put a dab of hot glue or something on it. Uh, we'll talk about this power supply I bought a little bit. Yeah, regular brick power supply. 110 in, 12 volt, 5 amps out. Uh, it's a center positive? Yeah, center positive barrel plug. reason I bought it is it came with these. Center pin, there's a little connector of some sort, but it also came with a uh, a flying lead adapter. I'll hold on to that. That's gonna be handy later for working on whatever. Probably for my '66, I could hardwire something into the dash, hook this up to it instead of trying to draw off the battery. It's a lot easier on that. Plus, I got my my power plug adapter there. So what I have done is I have taken taken this, chopped that end off, cut the shrink tube off, and drilled a hole to fit fit about right there. Went ahead and poked a I think it was a five sixteenths hole. Poked that hole in the lid, stuffed that in there like that. So on the back side, holding this lid, I got that, I got my two leads, so what I'm going to do is screw my, screw my fan down, this will come over and attach to the fan, and then I will run the wire, I'll orient the lid so the wire, right here, it comes up with this, like in the direction right, comes up like this that will be soldered on to this pair so they're going to be the fans going to wire I'll come off of it that and join it out here and so when the lids turn that around there you go. so when the lids like this the wires are all together drop that down in there I'm going to put a good chunk of shrink tube on them so they will be shrink tubed wire to focus so the, the wires will be shrink tube together and then I'll put a piece of shrink tube over the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the fan. Attach the fan, get the fan and this pair of leads soldered together. And I'll get the other set stripped back and tinned. So hopefully, if I play my cards right tonight, I'll have it together. Might be able to plug it up and run it. If not, I'll have it finished tomorrow night. So I'm going to get soldered iron out. 
and I'll get stuff together and I'll show you how this all fits up before I solder the wires and then we'll see it running. We'll be back in a few. Alright, so here's where we are. I have wired the fan to the power lead inside that bundle of my shrink tube, the power lead, the fan, and the pump all together. So it is black and red. So I went white, 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 red, 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 obviously. Um, so I've dumped about a gallon of water in there. So water level is about, yeah, about that white line, maybe a little higher. So what we're going to go ahead and do is test this out. Got the fan screwed down good. Put a little blue Loctite on the threads. Did put the screen on there. It fits nicely. Uh, got it apart. I'm going to fire it up, see how this pump runs. So make sure we're getting a good water flow around the ring. See what we got going on there. Uh, if there's any more modifications to be done. I'm going to set the phone down real quick and plug this up. And then I'll pick it back up. Doing something. It's getting there. We're going some water out. A good start. It's gonna take a little while to push all that air out. Maybe one of those things just have to run it some. Let's see. They're not nice air. So I'm gonna set this down. Stick the lid on there. And okay, we'll see how it all feels. Alright, so here's where we are. It's not super cool yet, but you can feel it pulling air. I may end up having to go back and close up some of the holes on that pump. It is definitely cooler. That's going to be nice in the shed. A little hollow. Chilly now. Uh, put a little water out of one of these holes. Yeah, there's one. Put the water out of that one. I didn't run water out of that one. That's not the end of the world. I'll get a fiberglass stick or plastic rod or something. Or little sheet of plastic and slip in there. It's something to keep it back. Honestly, this is going to live in my shed when I'm working on lawnmowers and stuff. Because today it's been kind of nice. It's been about 80 here today. And it, uh, I think my shed right now somewhere around the 95 range. Last week it was sunny and in the upper 80s, low 90s. And Eight, nine o'clock at night, it's still 110, 115 in my shop. So, we're in the shed. So, it's more taking me so long to work on my 66 or any of the lawnmowers I do because it's just stinking hot out there. Put a vent fan in it, but it uh, doesn't do that much. It's good airflow for painting and stuff, but as far as cooling it off, any, it just takes and replaces really hot air with hot air. So, this will be a nice addition. I think grand total I've spent less than a hundred dollars, maybe seventy bucks. I mean, the most expensive piece I have is the fan. I paid twenty-five dollars to buy a nice one on Amazon. I think the next, then the second most expensive piece is this pipe fitting, pipe fitting, or this toilet flange. That toilet flange is like eight or nine bucks. So what? Uh, it's not in the world. It goes went together really easily. And the nice thing is that if I ever want to change fans and it croaks, it's a just a regular 120 millimeter CPU fan. 
or nothing family would call thing, but then the pump if it dies, just any old five gallon amount of pump off of uh, Amazon will do. But getting some moisture over here now, so maybe the pump's catching up. Worst case, I have to get a hot glue gun and I'll plug up a couple of those holes in the uh, in that loop. But it was pumping good water. Sloshing in my water out. I was thinking about it. Might be, a, might be a way to drill a hole right here and put a uh, little clear plastic tube on it. Make a sight glass. Be kind of nifty. Ladder. I don't know if there's a way to come in the top. You can put a uh, stick float meter. But anyway, bucket air conditioner or swamp cooler, whatever you call it. It's done. Would you? Run off a brick power supply. So, wall current powered. And I got my uh, power port. Try it. I'm going to turn this bad boy around and have it blow up my workbench to uh, cool me off while I do a little more metal working. I'm going to call it a night. Thank y'all for watching. And I'm going to string all these together. Hopefully, they're not incoherent and y'all can follow it. But if somebody wants to parts list I'll put that in the comments or not the comments the video description parts list for what links I have and what I can find from Lowe's anyway whole thing that's it works pretty good y'all have a good one